Hey everybody, I just launched my brand new course called How to Start and Grow Your Online Hair Extension Business. Check out the link below to get started. Hey ladies, this is Brianna from HowToBlackHair.com and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how I achieve this gorgeous, natural, beautiful look by doing the crochet hairstyle. So this of course is the original crochet style besides doing braided crochet, but I'm gonna show you how to actually do this look on your own hair. You only need a few supplies to do this look and some of these supplies are optional. So make sure that you have your hair ready so that you can begin looping it onto your braids. And I use three packs of pre-crocheted hair. Now to begin, this is your braid pattern you want to do to achieve this exact look. You want those two braids to cross and go all the way down to the back. And then you want to begin braiding away from those two braids, making sure to add the tail end into the very next braid so that you can create a braid pattern that looks like this. So every time you braid, make sure to grab the tail end of the previous braid and put it into that braid. So the tail end of braid one goes into two, and the tail end of braid two goes into three, and you keep doing the same thing until you reach the back to have one tail end of a braid. What you want to do is bring your tail end of a braid up because that's when you're going to begin stitching it down to your braid pattern. So cut off a little bit of weaving thread and then you're gonna take a curved or straight needle, whichever you prefer. You're gonna put your thread through the eye of the needle, bring those two pieces together and simply form a knot. It is so easy threading needles, but a lot of you asked me in the comment section how to actually do it, so I'm showing you a demonstration of how simple and easy this is. And you only need one needle to stitch down that one braid you have in the back. So you just cut off the little bit of thread at the top, you make sure to tighten your knot, and there you go. That's simply how you thread a needle. So now we're going to begin stitching that braid and I'm gonna start where I just pointed. You wanna put your needle through part of your braid, put it underneath the braid on your scalp, and then begin doing the stitching technique to actually stitch down your braid. The stitching technique that I like to do is I like to actually grab the thread, wrap it twice around the needle, and then pull the needle through. Or you can wrap it twice around your fingers, insert the needle, and pull the needle through. The only thing you need to do is make sure, like I've stated, you just wrap it around twice, whether you do it around your fingers or the needle. And it's simply extremely easy to stitch it down. This is the same stitching technique I do when I'm actually doing a sewing. So now once you secure that last knot, you just cut off the remaining thread. And at this point, this is optional, but what I'm doing is I'm actually greasing my scalp, or you may refer to this as oiling your scalp. So I'm using a hair growth oil to actually put on my part before I begin crocheting. Now this is the pre-looped crochet hair that I've purchased on Amazon. So if you want to use this exact hair, check out the description box below to a link so that you can purchase it for yourself. So what I'm going to do is show you how I prep it. So what I do is I grab one of the coils and I actually make sure that I unravel it all the way out. And then once I do that, I gently separate it into two parts. So as you can see here, this is one of the pieces that I just took from it and I only divide it into two. Now if you divide it any further, it will make your look more frizzy or afro-like. So it's up to you the look you want to achieve. I already stitched in one row and I'm going to show you an example of how you want to actually space each piece. So as you can see here, it's about a finger width space in the very back. When you're crocheting the very back of your head, it's very important that you space it because it tends to get very full very quickly. You wanna make sure you're closer near the top with your pieces you add, but further in the back. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. To crochet your hair on, you wanna grab one of your locks and you wanna roll it very tight at the point where you're going to crochet it. So you have no loose hairs that stick out and get tangled. And this is how tight you want to form it around your finger. 
Now what we're gonna do is make sure that we go two finger spaces at a time at the very back of our head. This is extremely important if you don't want your look to be too thick but full enough. So now we're gonna insert the crochet latch and then we're gonna hook the hair onto it and we're gonna close the latch and then pull it through the braid. Every time you insert your latch, make sure it's open. When you pull it back through the braid, make sure it's closed. And you just loop the tail end of your section once through its loop at the top and that's how you want to actually tighten your hair in the back. Once we get to the top, it's gonna be a little bit different, but this is how you're going to do it for the most part. So now with the second section, we're doing the same thing. And make sure that you're about two finger spaces away from your previous section. You can go underneath both of these braids that you stitch, loop your hair on, and then close the latch. And then when you pull it through, all you do is insert your fingers inside of the loop to grab the two tail end pieces. And then you just pull it and tighten it by separating the two sections to make sure it's tight on your braids. As you can see, we're already getting pretty full, but you wanna continue to space and the look will come out just fine. So as you can see here, you wanna make sure you go about that distance as you're in the back until you get to the top. So this is how your hair should look so far. So now at this point, I've already crocheted most of my hair and I'm just lifting it up to show you how it looks on the sides as well as the back. Because this look is short, I am going to be wearing this down. But if you had a longer look with this technique, you could wear it up into a ponytail if you so desire. So now that we're near the top, you still wanna make sure that you coil the hair up tighter so that way you can loop it on. But the sections at the top will be a little bit smaller and it will be about a finger space width away from one another. So you loop the hair on as I previously showed you and every time you go back through the braid, you close the latch. Insert your fingers through and then grab the two tail ends and pull them together. Now you continue to actually tighten your knot exactly like this for most of the part. But as soon as you get to the very top, we're gonna do a slightly different technique. So now I'm gonna show you one more time since we're at the very top of this braid. And you're going to do the same technique but you wanna get as close to the top as possible for a very seamless look. So you just insert your hair through and then you insert your fingers through the loop to grab the two tail end pieces to actually tighten it and form your knot. Make sure that when you're near the top, the spacing of your sections is about a finger width apart. But as you can see, it looks extremely close together because the hair is so voluminous. Because it has so much volume, it looks like I literally stitched it side by side. But in reality, I did about a finger space width apart. So now at the very back, you're gonna do the same thing because you're at the top of your head. It gives the illusion that your hair is not extremely thick at the top, but it's full enough to look very natural. The problem with a lot of crochet styles that look unnatural is that the chunks of hair are too big and also the chunks of hair are stitched too close together. As you near the top, make sure that each of your pieces of hair that you're adding is actually smaller in comparison to the pieces of hair that you added in the back. So now we have our two braids left at our part and this, my friends, is the most important part of the style because it ties in the look together perfectly. When you loop your hair through, you want to make sure that you only grab one tail end of your lock. And when you pull it through, you create a knot while leaving the other half outside of the knot. This is exactly how you want to stitch your hair at your part because this is how you do the invisible roots technique. So I'm going to continue to teach you exactly how to achieve this look because it's extremely easy. Now when you loop your hands through, make sure you do a slight turn so that it helps to enhance the tightness of the knot at your part. You don't have to do that throughout the rest of your style, but you definitely want to do it right here at the top. Now that most of it's done, we have a little section left and I'm going to demonstrate how you want to do it on the other side. Now maybe it's just a little bit tricky depending on which hand is dominant for you. For me, it's my right hand. So when I loop it on the left side of my head, it's just a little bit tricky. So what I do is I do the same exact thing, but you may just go a little bit slower to make sure that you don't cause any tangling effect. 
because you want to make sure that you're always going underneath the braid near your part. So always come in going towards the part of your head, not away from the part. So that way it helps your hair to lay perfectly for the style. So now on this last section here, make sure to go as close to your hairline as possible because this makes it look extremely seamless. Because if you don't actually do this part, you will see some of your hair and it won't look as blended. So it's very important that you make sure to get as close to your hairline all the way near the top of your part so that way you can continue the invisible root technique to tie in your look. So as you can see, this is how it looks once I finish doing that invisible root technique near my part as I've added all the hair onto my style. I used about two and a half bundles of the pre-crocheted hair for this look. So you're gonna need some hair cutting scissors or you can also use thinning shears if you want to actually thin out the hair. But I love the thickness of this look because it looks so beautiful and natural. So I'm just trimming up any frizzy or loose ends that doesn't quite tie in as well and I'm also slightly shaping it as I cut. So I'm not cutting off any length, I'm just cleaning up the shape that it naturally has. After trimming it up, I like to go ahead and fluff out the hair a little bit so that it looks more tied in together. And I'm just checking the other side too to make sure it's just right for my look. Thank you so much for watching my Crochet Braids hairstyle. So ladies, I want you to rock this look and wear all types of colors and curl patterns to see what you like best. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Also, by the way, I'm almost at 500,000 subscribers. So make sure to subscribe and turn on bell notifications to see my next video. Hey everybody, I just launched my brand new course called How to Start and Grow Your Online Hair Extension Business. Check out the link below to get started.